9 Unsolved Mysteries About Trips Into The Wilderness Number 9. The Disappearance of Keith Reinhardt In 1988, 49-year-old Keith Reinhardt was a sports writer for the Daily Herald in Chicago, but he decided to take a leave absence for a unique outing. He moved to Silver Plume, Colorado, a small mining village near the Rocky Mountains. Reinhard became fascinated by the story of Tom Young, a Silver Plume resident who disappeared under mysterious circumstances the year before. On September 7, 1987, Young closed up his books tour and walked into the mountains with his dog but never returned. Reinhard decided to open an antique shop in the former location of Young's books tour and started working on a novel based on Young's disappearance. In a near coincidence, Keith Reinhard soon became the center of his own unsolved mystery. On July 31, the remains of Tom Young and his dog were found in the mountains. They were both shot in the head and, since a revolver was found at the scene, investigators ruled that Young likely shot his dog before committing suicide. One week later, Reinhard closed up his shop and told people he was planning to climb the summit of Pendleton Mountain. After leaving the village, he was never seen again. The circumstances of Reinhard's disappearance were strange since it was a six-hour hike to Pendleton Mountain and he did not leave until 4.30 p.m. At the time, Reinhard was not carrying any equipment and was not dressed appropriately for a mountain climb. A search of the area turned up no trace of him and, tragically, one of the searchers was killed after crashing his plane. There was some speculation that Reinhard staged his own disappearance. Others believed that both Reinhard and Young were victims of foul play and that their cases were somehow connected. Whatever the truth, Keith Reinhard's disappearance remains a mystery. Number 8. The Disappearance of Derek Engebertson On December 5, 1998, Derek Engebertson, an eight-year-old boy from Bonanza, Oregon, went on a trip to Winnema National Forest in Klamath County alongside his father and grandfather. The family was planning to get a Christmas tree while hiking near Rocky Point. A snowstorm soon hit the area and Derek wandered away and disappeared. When Derek's family notified the authorities, a search was conducted for him but they were undermined by the terrible weather. Searchers found some blood in the area along with items which may have been connected to Derek including a candy wrapper and a bookmark from his school. They also found a makeshift shelter made out of fir boughs. While the likely explanation seemed to be that Derek had frozen to death in the wilderness, there was evidence to suggest he might have been abducted instead. A set of footprints led searchers to the road where the imprint of a snow angel was found. Around the time of Derek's disappearance, a witness saw an unidentified man struggling with a young boy near the road. In 2002, a prison inmate came forward to claim that a convicted child rapist named Frank J. Milligan had bragged about murdering Derek. Years earlier, Milligan received a 36-year prison sentence for the rape and attempted murder of a 10-year-old boy and for sexually abusing another boy. When questioned, Milligan told authorities that Derek had made it out of the woods and that he murdered the boy after picking him up by the road. Milligan said he would lead them to Derek's body but, after a search of the area turned up nothing, he decided to recant his confession. Officially, there is no evidence to connect Milligan to the crime and Derek Engelbertson's disappearance remains unsolved. Number 7. The Falcon Lake UFO Encounter there are thousands of recorded sightings from people claiming to have encountered a UFO, but it's very rare to find someone with actual physical evidence on their body to support their story. One of those people was Polish-born Stephen Michlak, who made his home in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. On May 20, 1967, the 51-year-old Michlak went out on a prospecting trip to Falcon Lake Provincial Park. He eventually spotted two glowing silver objects hovering above him. One of them flew away and disappeared, but the other one landed on a large rock formation. Michilak approached the strange craft which was over 9 meters in diameter. The door opened, a bright light emerged from the object, and Michilak thought he heard muffled voices inside. After Michilak touched the craft, the door suddenly closed and the craft took off again, knocking him over. 
This set Mitchell Ack's shirt on fire, forcing him to tear it off. After the experience, Mitchell Ack became nauseous and disoriented and it took him nine hours to find his way home. The object had left several first-degree burns on his abdomen which resembled a grid-like pattern of holes. When he showed the burns to doctors, they were completely baffled. The burns emitted a sulfuric stench but, even though Mitchell Ack was frequently nauseous, tests found no signs of any radiation poisoning. Weeks later, Mitchell Ack returned to the original site and found a 9-meter burned-out circle on the rock formation. Analysts also found traces of non-lethal radiation in the area. The unexplained burn marks remained on Mitchell Ack's torso for the rest of his life. No one knows for sure if he actually saw a UFO, but the physical evidence found on his body and at the scene indicates that he definitely encountered something strange that day. Number 6. The Disappearances of David Till and Brian Ogden. David Till and Brian Ogden were 27-year-old residents from the Detroit area who traveled to northern Michigan for a hunting trip on November 22, 1985. They were planning to stay the weekend at Till's cabin, but both men disappeared and were never seen again. The Ford Bronco they drove also went missing which seemed to indicate they never arrived at their destination. In fact, they never even got around to purchasing their hunting licenses so it seemed unlikely that they simply got lost in the wilderness. The case remained cold until 2003 when a witness named Barbara Baldro was subpoenaed by the authorities and shared a horrifying story. According to Baldro, Till and Ogden stopped off at a bar called the Linker's Lounge in the rural community of Mayo. It was there that they ran afoul of Raymond and Donald Duval, a pair of brothers who lived in the surrounding woods. The Duvals allegedly beat Till and Ogden to death outside the bar while they begged for mercy. Afterward, they chopped up the victims' bodies and fed the remains to their pigs. Apparently, numerous people witnessed this incident and the Duval brothers repeatedly bragged about it over the years. However, since the Duvals were known for being intimidating characters in the community, everyone was too frightened to go the authorities. In their defense, Aside from eyewitness testimony there was no physical evidence linking the Duvals to the disappearances, and Baldro was reportedly intoxicated on the night she witnessed the murders. Nevertheless, the Duval brothers were both convicted on two counts of first-degree murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. The remains of David Till and Brian Ogden have still not been found and, if the story about the pigs is true, they never will be. Number 5. The Disappearance of James Herod During the 18th century, James Herod was one of America's most notable explorers. He founded the very first settlement in Kentucky which became known as Herodsburg. In 1792, the same year Kentucky officially became a state, Herod was living in Herodsburg with his wife and daughter. He decided to go into the wilderness on a hunting trip with two companions. Herod never returned and there were numerous theories about what happened to him. Some believed that Herod deliberately abandoned his family and traveled to another part of the country. There were unconfirmed rumors that Herod's wife was often flirtatious with other men and may have had extramarital affairs. While Mrs. Herod got remarried after his disappearance, she managed to get a divorce in 1804 on the grounds that she believed her husband was still alive. However, Mrs. Herod had only used that as an excuse to get a divorce. In actuality, she believed her husband was murdered by one of his companions. Apparently, the real purpose of his trip was not to go hunting, but to find a silver mine for a mysterious man known only as Bridges. The third man who accompanied Herod and Bridges on the trip claimed that Herod disappeared after Bridges told him he was attacked by Native Americans, but the man never actually witnessed anything to support Bridges' story. Later on, Bridges was seen pawning off some silver buttons which matched the buttons Herod had on his shirt. Shortly thereafter, Herod's friends found a skeleton in a cave wearing a shirt with its buttons missing. In the end, the skeletal remains were left behind and never identified as Herod, and Bridges disappeared before he could be questioned. The truth about what happened to James Herod remains unknown. Number 4. The Death of Philippe Hausmann's Father after leaving Europe and moving to the U.S. during the 1940s, 
Philippe Haussmann became one of the world's most renowned portrait photographers. However, before Haussmann's career even began, his life was almost derailed by a controversial murder case. On September 10, 1928, the 22-year-old Haussmann went on a hiking trip with his father, Mordjuch Haussmann, in the Zillertal Valley in Tyrol, Austria. According to Haussmann, he was walking ahead of his father when he suddenly fell into a ravine. When Haussmann found his father's body near a riverbank, he was still alive so Haussmann went off to get help. By the time he returned, his father was dead and his empty wallet was now resting beside him. A stone was found with Mordjuch Haussmann's blood and hair on it, indicating that he was robbed and murdered sometime after his fall. Authorities soon made the shocking allegation that Philippe Haussmann was responsible and charged him with his father's murder. He was found guilty and sentenced to 10 years in prison. However, Haussmann had no discernible motive to kill his father and there was no evidence to implicate him. Since Haussmann was Jewish and Tyrol was known for being an anti-Semitic community at the time, this seemed to be the motivating factor behind his conviction. He had many notable supporters who believed in his innocence, including Albert Einstein and Sigmund Freud. The prosecution had presented Freud's Oedipus complex as a possible motive for Haussmann murdering his father, but Freud himself refuted this idea. Haussmann eventually garnered a new trial and received a lighter sentence of four years, but his supporters weren't satisfied. They successfully petitioned the president of Austria to grant Haussmann a full pardon, and he was released in October of 1930. The real murderer of Mordjuch Haussmann was never found. Number 3. The Disappearance of Jared Negri On July 19, 1991, Jared Negri, a 12-year-old boy from El Monte, California, traveled to Camp Taquitz in the San Bernardino National Forest. He was going on an overnight camping trip with his Boy Scout troop and they were planning to hike to the top of the 3,500-meter Mount San Gorgonio. As the troop neared the top of the summit, Jared wandered away and disappeared after apparently straying onto the wrong trail. When the troop discovered that Jared was missing, an extensive search was conducted of the area by rescue teams. They found a lot of matching shoe prints and some items which belonged to Jared including his backpack, beef jerky, and candy wrappers. In spite of these clues, they could not find any trace of Jared. This story would probably be a straightforward and tragic case of a boy succumbing to the elements after getting lost in the wilderness, but Jared managed to leave behind one very haunting image. Jared's camera was also found in the woods, and its film contained 12 recent photographs which were eventually developed. Most of the pictures were landscape shots which were taken before he disappeared, but the last photo was a self-portrait which Jared had taken of himself. Since Jared's arms were too short to hold the camera out very far, the photo only wound up capturing his eyes and nose. It seemed clear that Jared looked scared and that the mysterious picture was taken after he went missing. This self-portrait of Jared Negrete remains the last existing trace of him. Number 2. The Murders of Julian Marie Williams and Laura Lolly Winnens On May 19, 1996, a young lesbian couple traveled to Shenandoah National Park in Virginia for a hiking trip. The women were named Julian Marie Williams and Laura Lolly Winnens. Winnens also brought along her pet golden retriever. Nearly two weeks later, after neither of the women's families had heard from them, the authorities were notified. When park rangers launched a search on June 1, they came upon a campsite and discovered that Williams and Winnens had been brutally murdered. Both women were bound and gagged before their throats were slit. Winnens's golden retriever was also found wandering around the area, unharmed. Given the women's sexual orientation and the brutal and calculated nature of the murders, authorities wondered if they were victims of a hate crime. In 2002, an incarcerated man named David Darrell Rice was charged with murdering the two women along with two counts of committing a hate crime. Rice was already serving an 11 year sentence for attacking another young woman in Shenandoah National Park in 1997 and was known for expressing his hatred toward women and homosexuals. It was believed that he deliberately targeted Williams and Winnens because of their sexual orientation. Two years later, 
The charges against Wright were dropped once it was determined that DNA and hair samples from the crime scene did not match him. However, suspicion eventually turned to a serial killer named Richard Evonitz. In June 2002, Ivonitz was about to be arrested for an unrelated crime but shot himself when police tracked him down. Forensic evidence eventually linked Ivonitz to the unsolved murders of three teenage girls from the mid-1990s. Since these crimes also occurred in Virginia around the same time Williams and Winans were murdered, Ivonitz is considered a suspect but thus far nothing has connected him to the crime. Number 1. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park Disappearances The Great Smoky Mountains National Park borders Tennessee and North Carolina and is the most visited national park in the U.S. Therefore, it's probably inevitable that the park has its fair share of unsolved disappearances. On June 14, 1969, six-year-old Dennis Martin went on an outing to the park with his family. Dennis and three other boys split off in separate directions to play a prank, but Dennis did not return and a massive search of the area turned up nothing. A nearby witness recalled hearing a frightening scream sometime that afternoon before he saw a rough-looking man running through the woods. Years later, a man found what appeared to be the skeletal remains of a child in the park but did not inform the authorities because he was hunting illegally at the time. When he finally reported it during the 1980s, the remains could no longer be found. No one knows if either of these events had any connection to Dennis Martin's disappearance. Another unsolved Smoky Mountains disappearance involved 16-year-old Trenny Gibson who vanished during a school trip to the park on October 18, 1976. While the students were hiking, Trenny somehow became separated from them and disappeared, never to be seen again. On September 25, 1981, 58-year-old Thelma Melton was hiking through the park on Deep Creek Trail with two friends when she got way ahead of them and disappeared after walking over a hill. No one could find her afterward. More recently, 24-year-old Derek Joseph Oyukin went missing on March 17, 2012. His vehicle was found in the Newfound Gap parking lot. All his gear had been left behind. But there was a note on the windshield which read, Don't try to follow me. No trace of Liuking could be found anywhere in the park, adding his name to the list of people who have mysteriously disappeared into the Great Smoky Mountains. If you enjoy video, please subscribe my channel. Thank for watching.